Hey there guys, it's Salis, and I gotta ask the question. What the hell happened to demos? Many moons ago, because I am an old fart in the wind, I used to get PlayStation 2 official magazine every month, along with a slew of other gaming magazines, and these magazines came with demo discs. Hell, I'm old enough to remember when magazines came with entire games on the front cover, but that's a different story. They were little chunks of the game to show off key mechanics and ideas in the game that you may potentially purchase, and when I say chunks, I don't mean so-called vertical slices, like the so-called demo for Aliens Colonial Marines. These days, games have these grand sweeping trailers that cost way more money to put together than a short taster of the game, especially when it comes to how games are distributed these days. And most of these trailers are pre-rendered by some animation studio, and don't reflect the finished game in any way, shape, or form. And this is misleading and builds false hope, and believe me when I say, they are passing this extremely expensive cost on to you. You've probably all noticed by now exactly how much video games have jumped up in price along with the rise of these pre-rendered trailers. That's because the studios that make these games spend thousands if not millions of dollars paying some people in some animation house to make these little mini movies. Which already puts the studio in a deficit before the game releases. So in order to first remake the cost of that piece of shit, they have to bump up the cost of the game. And that can be about 10 to $20 per copy. And that's just to cover their own ass. Now, I'm not dismissing trailers as a means of getting word out. For movies, they work because it's a non-interactive medium. But for a game, which its whole point is its interactability, yes, that is a word, you want to give potential players the chance to actually interact with the world you've created. That's what gets us much between the crotch area. And it's getting a hands-on with part of the game It's not watching something that isn't even gameplay with your logo at the end. Now, not all games these days are released sans demo. But those that are, especially from the bigger studios, release the demo at the same bastard day as the game. And when you consider that these companies only care about pre-order numbers and week one sales, this is just a bad strategy. And on that note, can I say this very loud? Don't call a demo a beta and don't make it pre-order exclusive. So, this is the thing that happens. Pre-order and play the beta is something we see a lot these days. When in fact, the thing you're going to play is a demo because the game is fucking finished, printed onto discs and just waiting to ship. A real beta is broken, buggy and allows players the chance to find new ways to break the game and provide feedback to the developer. That way they can fix things. And often we're able to break things in ways that their in-house QA team didn't notice or never thought to try. Because let's face it, your average gamer can break a game in more imaginative ways than someone paid to do it non-stop. But I will concede there are games that come out like the Stanley Parable, which do have a demo. But it's altogether something more than anyone could have expected. It teaches the ideas and mechanics of the game in new and exciting ways to the point whereby it's a game in itself. And it genuinely got me interested for the game. So I bought it. That's what a demo does. But I think where demos came into their own was the console market, particularly when upgrading to the next gen. Unlike these days where companies boom out grand edicts from above, Buy our shit, you sheep! Companies would already have a bunch of games to show you when you bought the next big thing. I'll never forget the demo that came to me with the PS2. Hell, that's how I discovered the magical world of Dark Cloud. But not only that, the demo discs got updated. A later model of the PS2 my sister got came with a demo disc in the same sleeve but with different games on it, more up-to-date demos. So clearly this was how the PlayStation put its best foot forward for its, well, for its sequel. It's a shame they don't do it these days, really. So please, games industry, make demos. They are cheaper than trailers because most of the work is already done. Or at least it should be. 
and give players a chance to get a hands-on before the game launches. And for God's sake, don't call a demo a beta. It just pisses actual beta testers off. So, what do you think? Is there any reason for a game to have a trailer? Or should the playable demo be the way forward? Let me know in the comments down below. And until our next discussion, I've been Silas. Movies have trailers, games have demos, and I will see you next time.